Hello and welcome to a programming edition of The Postcard Professor, where we explore the practical use of programming in engineering and physics. In this video, we're going to be looking at a package in Python known as CoolProp. Now, CoolProp is not natively installed on Google Colab, and so we're going to need to use this special command in order to install it. Now, we're going to use a handful of commands that we used last time. So the reset minus F, which just gets rid of any variables that we have stored in memory. We're going to be using NumPy. And NumPy gives us things like square root and pi. Uh, we're going to import matplotlib, just in case we decide to plot anything. And then finally, we're going to import coolprop. And we're going to use a slightly different command for coolprop. So we could use this from coolprop.coolprop import all, and then we wouldn't have to write CP in front of things. But we're going to use this command just so we can really be clear when we're using commands from coolprop. Now coolprop is a really useful package that it basically allows us to do table lookups on the computer. So for instance, Let's say that we want to find the density of water at a certain temperature and pressure. What we can do is we can say that density is equal to CP, so that gets us to the cool prop module, and then we're using the function props SI from that module in order to grab the density. And there's a special list of arguments for this function, but the way we say that is what we want, and then just like in anything in thermodynamics, we need to give it two values in order for it to give us anything. And so we're gonna give it temperature and pressure. And so our temperature is 300, and our pressure is gonna be 100 times 1,000. So this E3 is basically saying times 10 to the third power. So it's, it's a shorthand of saying times 10 cubed. This is the value that we have if we convert this 100 kilopascals to a value of pascals. And the last thing we need to do is we need to tell it what substance we're using. So we're going to be using water. Let's print out that density value and see what we end up with. At 300 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals, we end up with a density of 996. And that sounds right. If you've taken fluids, then you know that water should be around 1,000. So if we want to be a little bit more specific with our print statement, we can say that this is the density of water at 300 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals, and that value is density. And the units that we're getting out of this is kilograms per meters cubed. So we used a lot of values here that I just know, but to make life a little bit easier, Let's have a little cheat sheet. So these are the symbols, and this is not all of them. There's a complete list in the details of this video, but this is a list of things that we're likely to use pretty frequently. So density is we just used, pressure we just used, and temperature we just used. So for each of these properties, I've listed the units that are required by CoolProp to understand. So for instance, pressure has to be pascals. If you put in kilopascals, then you're gonna be a factor of a thousand off. For us, we're used to using the steam tables. Well, the steam tables use kilopascals or megapascals. So we may need to convert between what we're doing with the steam tables and what we're doing with CoolProp. And of course, the steam tables usually have specific volume, and that's usually the value that we're interested in whenever we're doing our analyses. And so we'll need to find specific volume just by taking one over the density. So important things for us now are that the temperature needs to be in Kelvin every single time, and the pressure needs to be in Pascals every single time. And then finally, we're used to using X as a symbol for quality, but uh, CoolProp likes to use Q. Okay, let's make a gap here in our printing and do another thing. A lot of the time we want to use the ideal gas law and it's not 
perfectly correct, right? We, we actually are making an assumption which brings in some error. If we want to do something with air, for instance, we can actually use coolprop and get the values directly rather than using the ideal gas law. So for instance, we can find the pressure of air at a specific volume of 0.3 meters cubed per kilogram and a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Just a reminder, these green parts are comments. They don't actually affect the running of the code in any way. This chunk here is a multi-line comment. And so if you do three of those quotation marks in a row, it'll ignore everything until you get down to another set of three. So this is a special comment that's called a doc string, but it's just an easy way to get multi-line comments. In this case, we have to start out by calculating the density of air from our specific volume, right? So we know that this is gonna be one divided by the specific volume, and that will get us in units of kilograms per meters cubed. Again, just using these comments as a way to keep track of our units. And then we can get the temperature of our air by taking that 20 degrees Celsius and adding 273.15, and that gets it to Kelvin. And then finally, we can use Coolprop to find the pressure of our air. So the CP props SI, and honestly, once I have one working version, I like to copy and paste down onto my next instance. And so this time we're looking for pressure, we're giving it density, and this time we're using density as a variable instead of directly putting in the value. So density is gonna go here, and temperature is gonna go in our second spot, and so this will be our temperature of air. And we're not using water this time, we're using air. So with that, we can press play. It got the density of the water before. I forgot to get a print statement. So let's copy our print statement down. So pressure of air at 20 degrees Celsius and 0.3 meters cubed per kilogram. That's pressure of air, and this is in Pascals. So this is a little hard to read. So what we can do instead of writing just pressure of air here, we can go ahead and divide by a thousand and say that now this is kilopascals. And so now it's writing 280 kilopascals. So with all of that done, let's go look at quality. For our next little exercise, we're gonna find the temperature that boiling occurs at at a pressure of, uh, let's do 10 megapascals. So our pressure, we need to start off by converting from megapascals to pascals. So this is going to be 10 E6, and that is from megapascals to pascals. And then we wanna find the temperature. Well, the trick here is that we can use any quality in order to find the boiling temperature. So what we're going to do is we're gonna use the same CP props SI command. This time we're trying to find temperature, we're giving it pressure, and the other thing we're gonna give it is quality. So it doesn't matter if we're looking at a quality of 0.5, of one, or zero, it'll be the same for all of these. And we're doing this with water. So the boiling temperature at 10 megapascals is going to be this temp, and this is in Kelvin. So water boils at 10 megapascals at 584 Kelvin. Or if we prefer, we can subtract off 273.15 and get this in degrees Celsius. And so that's right at 311 degrees Celsius. So that's using quality. And like I said, it doesn't matter if we're using quality of 0.5, of 0.1, that temperature should be the same no matter what, based purely off of pressure. And so we can change the pressure up and we should see a change in that temperature. At one megapascal, it boils at around 180 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's a pretty good start. Uh, let's do something a little bit fancier. So our next step, we're going to copy the same chunk from before. And I am gonna reference this from the first one if I need it, but we're not gonna do anything too fancy. We're gonna use the same sort of stuff for this next thing. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to plot a constant temperature line for water. So we're actually going to 
calculates the pressure for a whole bunch of different volumes for a specific temperature. So the constant temperature line is gonna be changing volume. So we want to specify that our specific volume is going to be an array. And we do that using the lens space command. And we're going to go from 0 0.001 up to three, and we're gonna have 100 different values there. Now, in order to put things into cool prop, we can't use specific volume. And so we need to calculate the density, which is gonna be one divided by the specific volume. And we want a constant temperature line. The first one we're going to do is at 400 degrees Celsius. And so we're gonna say that T1 here is equal to 400, and we again need to convert to Kelvin. And so we're going to add 273.15. And then with cool prop, we can calculate our pressure by using the props SI command again. And we can input this entire array. So we're gonna be giving it density and, and temperature, and we're doing this for water. So this is the entire array, and this should work no problem. And if we printed out our pressures here, we should get a wide range of pressures. So let's try to plot this instead of printing out the values. And this is a PV diagram, which means that the specific volume is on the x-axis and the pressure is on the y-axis. So we can plot this. And honestly, what we end up with is not very exciting. So we're going to do something else. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to switch to a semi-log y. So what this does is it makes our pressures a little more expanded, right? So we are shooting up all the way to 10 to the ninth, which is one gigapascal. And it was kind of losing all this interesting information down in the one megapascal range that we're usually more interested in. But we can actually do better than that. Instead of doing semi-log, we can, you can actually use a log log. And what this does for us is it plots things logarithmically for both the y-axis and the x-axis. Now this brings up a problem. If we plot this a little bit differently, let's plot it so that we can actually see the various points. There's only one point between 10 to the negative three and basically two or three times 10 to the negative two, right? Because we have that lens space, right? These are evenly spaced between 0 0.001 and three. There's a big gap in the way that we're used to seeing this. So instead of using lens space, we're going to use log space. So let's comment out that first line and switch this up to say log space. Now log space is a little bit weird. You don't input the values directly. Instead, what you input are the powers of 10 that you want. So this will go from 0 0.001, right, which is 10 to the negative three, to 10 or 10 to the one. That is the range that we're using. We're gonna have 100 points logarithmically spaced in between those two bounds. So we run that again, and we can see that our points are much more evenly spaced when we're on this log log plot. So anytime that you're using a logarithmic plot, especially in the X direction, uh, it's much better to use that log space command. Let's look at this as a line again. So we can just delete this point and that will bring up the line that we're used to. Okay, some other small changes. Let's write our labels for our axes, right? Let's give this plot some meaning. So our X label is the specific volume and our units for that are meters cubed per kilogram. Our Y label is pressure. And right now it's in Pascals, but let's actually change it to be in megapascals. And the way we do that, right, we, we're writing megapascals here. That doesn't mean we'll automatically be in megapascals in our plots. We need to divide our P1 by a million, and that'll get us in megapascals. So this is 10 megapascals, this is 100, this is 1,000 megapascals. And then finally, let's get a better axis on this. So we know that we're going from 0.001. Uh, let's not go all the way to 10. Instead, let's end at three. So that'll give us X values. So X min, X max of 0 0.001 and three. So we're not gonna go all the way to 10. And then for Y min and Y max, let's use a value of 0 0.01 and 100. So that'll give us 10 to negative two down here up to 10 squared. 
This isn't showing this specific line quite as nicely, but it will look a lot better whenever we have more lines on here. So let's copy and paste this chunk of code three more times. And we're gonna do this at 300, 200, and 100 degrees Celsius. And let's go ahead and change these variable names as well. So we have T2, let's make it P2 in both of these spots. So we're changing T2, which goes here, and then we're changing P2, which goes here. And then, so same thing, T3, P3, and that's used here and here. And then finally, T4 and P4, which is used here and here. And so if we run this now, well, we ended up with all the same plots, but that's just because we forgot to change these values. So this should be 300, 200, and 100. Let's try that again. Okay, so now we see four different isothermal lines on our PV diagram. Now, we have these different lines on our plot, but by itself, this plot doesn't tell us what those lines mean. So let's give it a legend. And a legend needs to take a list of labels. And so each of those labels is gonna be a string. And so we're gonna start off with 400 degrees Celsius, 300 degrees Celsius, 200, and 100. And that will give us a nice legend on our plot. And then finally, we can add a title. And this plot is just isothermal lines for water. And so we'll call it that. And so now we have four isothermal lines plotted that we got purely from using the props si command on these arrays. So we had an array for our density and a scalar for our temperature. And that output an array for our pressure that we asked for. So CoolProp is a very powerful module. It allows us to get data that we'd normally have to do lookups on tables for. Now we will be doing more of this in the future, but in any case, I hope this was helpful and I will catch you next time.